Hello, freak bitches. He's very physically strong. It's a strange comparison to make, but back in the day, I used to hang out a lot with Dennis Rodman when he was oh, playing yeah. for the Bulls, and he had freakish strength, kind of similar body, mm -hmm. like very long. Yeah. Not, like you wouldn't look at him and think muscles. Right. And Rodman could pick a 250-pound man up with one hand and lift him <laughs> over a rope. I saw him do it at a club. Really? Some guy was acting up, and Dennis just reached over the guy, picked him up like this. Jesus. And then even if people would remember NBA fans. Uh, Dennis used to guard. Uh, Dennis used to guard Shaq, one on one. Yeah, and that was when Shaq was what you know three forty or something. Right, right. Dennis would just, and that was when they had the whole thing. You couldn't use your hand. You had the elbow and all that yeah. stuff. He guard him one on one. Freakish strength. And you're like, you look at him, you think, how is that possible? Yeah. Some guys just have that weird, mm -hmm. whatever that is. It's a lot of times it's those long guys, too. Mm -hmm. Something is about long limbs and leverage. And it's like they have this, if they have, as long as they have a certain amount of muscle with that long, those long limbs yeah. and long there leverage. I mean, yeah. look at the, look, okay. Freakish. And this, you know, this is like the era I'm hanging out with Dennis. I mean, look at Dennis's size compared to Shaq. I yeah, mean, you would, crazy. If, you, if you didn't know it was Dennis Rodman, it was just some, you know, NBA scrub, right? You would think there's no way that guy's going to guard him one-on-one, -on -one. Yeah. especially Shaq in his prime there. There's no way. Yeah. It's, Rodman's a crazy guy. It's interesting. <laughs> Speaking crazy. Yeah. Can it's I tell you a funny story? Please. I got a good story. Yeah. So, used to hang out a lot with Dennis uh, and, uh, you know, hadn't seen him for years, was at a restaurant in Chicago not too long ago, and... Um, and uh, somebody said, oh, you guys are friends with Dennis, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's upstairs. Oh, really? We go upstairs. Dennis is crying. Oh, my God, I miss you guys. Me and my buddy. We're hanging out with him, telling old stories. You know, seven or eight years haven't seen him. It's great. Like uh, when you see a buddy you really love and it's really affectionate. And Dennis is one of those people. At some point, he just gets up and he wanders away. I think he's going to take a piss. Okay. About 10 minutes goes by. I say to the waitress, did Dennis leave? Yeah, he left. Okay. I just figure he's gone. It's just the way he is. Right. He wouldn't even say goodbye. Just gone. I get up the next morning. I turn the television. Dennis Rodman's in North Korea. <laughs> okay. I, by the way, I spent an hour and a half with him. He didn't say anything about going to North Korea. Oh, right? God. So I turn on the television. It's like, very controversial. Dennis Rodman's in North Korea. So I text my buddy and I say, have you seen the news? No, what? I say, turn on the television and he said what channel and i said it doesn't matter <laughs> and two minutes goes by holy fuck because <laughs> he went through the same thing you know <laughs> wow yeah what is his deal with that north korean dude he just goes over there and hangs out with him and I, dennis is really a genuine uh you know a naive hearted person mm -hmm. so in my best understanding is he truly believes he can affect the world in a positive way so there's really nothing, feels like Dennis, he, there's not a bad bone in Dennis's body. Wow. Dennis has his issues, but he's not a bad hearted guy. So in his kind of crazy ideological frame, he actually thinks he's helping. So he thinks he can go over there and talk some sense into that guy. Or by playing basketball, op you know, whatever he's. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, just so strange. it's not a good, that's not a good shot. I mean, you know what I mean? It's, it's not a good look, but. Yeah. I mean, he's hanging around with a murderous dictator hoping for the best. But that's what I mean about the naivete, and I yes. don't mean to cast shade on Dennis. I really love Dennis. He's been nothing but a total sweetheart to, my, to me in my life. But I, I gen, Dennis would, in a very naive way, believe that he's actually helping. It's a very gangster move to go over there, though. I mean, it's just, it seems but that's very where, that's dangerous. That's where the other part, side of Dennis, it makes a certain sense. It's like, I'll do it. Yeah. Remember Oof. when he was dressing up in drag? And, yeah. You know, it's like, I'll be that guy. Yeah. So it's somehow it sort of works in his... Again, I'm not trying to speak for him, but... He was one of my favorite guys in Celebrity Rehab, because he was, like, working out every day, drinking water. Dude, I used to go into the Bulls locker room after games, and he would work out after games. Really? we go in to go, because we were going to go out clubbing or whatever, and you go in the locker room, and he'd be working out. And we wow. have to sit and wait for him to work out for another 40 minutes after the game. And he played... It wasn't like he was had a knee injury. I mean, he played the whole game. Like what kind of workouts? You like lifting weights or something? Treadmill, you know, whatever, whatever he was doing. Wow! And it wasn't it wasn't like light stretching. It was like <laughs> energizing. But and then we go out and stay out all night. Jesus! They, quick, you want a quick story? So I'm hanging out with the Bulls. It's the first time they're playing Utah. Um, they 
and it's a very it's a, it's a series the Bulls probably should have lost, but they didn't. It's the famous game where uh, the famous series where Michael had the flu and scored thirty six points. I don't know if you know that game. It's like one of the most famous games. Michael legit had crazy flu and scored thirty six, and they won the game and they won the series. So in between one of those games, Dennis knows some billionaire. There's a day off. We get on the billionaire's plane and we fly to Vegas. We stay out all night gambling. And this is Dennis, like, you know, rubbing dice on people's bodies and throwing the dice so drunk they're bouncing out of the, you know, the craps pit. And I mean, just total mess. And you're thinking, how is this going to help us win a championship? Very much a fan mentality. I'm thinking, you know, naively, I'm going to kind of rein him in. <laughs> so, so we stay out all night. We get up, the, we would never go to bed. We get, we fly on the private plane back to make the morning press shoot around back in Utah. So we've only been in, uh, we've only been in Vegas for like eight hours. So 9 a.m., I'm sitting in the stands. I haven't slept at all. They do the whatever, the shoot around. And Dennis walks up and says, let's go back. Go, go back where? The hotel? No, let's go back to Vegas. So after the morning shoot around, drove to the airport to fly commercial because now the billionaire is not flying him back again and gets on a plane commercial and is giving me shit because I don't want to go back to Vegas with him. Jesus Christ. On the off day. And this is during the NBA, NBA finals. So through some sort of weird, you know, how the world works, I end up somewhere. I don't play. I go to play miniature golf or something in Park City, Utah, where the Bulls were staying. And Phil Jackson and his family had just happened to be there on like an off day. And Phil's given me the look of death because I'm the one responsible for Dennis going to Vegas. The rock star yeah, dragged him yeah, to the yeah. party. I'm and the you bad guy. It. Oh, that's hilarious. And I'm thinking, you don't understand. I'm the one to tell him not to go. <laughs> I want to win a championship, Did or at you least tell I want. No, what are you going to say to Phil Jackson? Have you ever met Phil Jackson? No. Phil Jackson's an intimidating guy. I mean, he plays very zen on TV, but in person, he's very intimidating. 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, and, and he was legitimately upset at you? Uh, let's just say it wasn't a nice encounter. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Phil Jackson. I mean, I love those years. I love those teams. And I was lucky to be around them a lot. I used to say, look, watching this team is like 1927 Yankees. I mean, you will look back very fondly on this time and to even be in that bubble at all and it was awesome. But, yeah, I mean, <laughs> catching shade from Phil Jackson at the height of the Bulls thing, it was just so funny. And I'm playing miniature golf, and, you know, this is so uncomfortable. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs>